video, we're going to learn about the ephemeral column modifier. So ephemeral columns are not stored in the database and you can't select from them. They are solely used to construct default value expressions for other columns. Let's launch ClickHouse and have a look. So we're going to describe a logs file that I've got on my machine. And you can see it's got a single column. It doesn't even have a header. So ClickHouse has named it C1. Let's now write a select query to get back one row from that file. And as you can see, we've got an IP address, we've got a date, we've got request method, we've got URL, we've got browser, and then we've got some other fields as well. But we need to parse that string. So we're going to write ourselves a function called parse log line, and we're going to extract a bunch of regex groups from, from that string. Uh, I, I let ChatGPT write this, uh, write this code for me and we'll include it in the description. Let's now update our select query to include a call to the parse log line function. And you can see it's now pulled out the different parts of the log entry. So you can see what the RIP address in there. We've got the date, we've got the time, we've got the request method, which is get, and then we've got the other information as well. Now we're going to have a look at how to create a table. So it's going to be called logs. Well, our first column is going to be line, and that's going to be a string, and that's going to be ephemeral. So that's the, the data, the initial sort of import data. We can also use the ephemeral column for intermediate state. And so our second column is going to be parts. That's going to be an array of strings. It's going to be ephemeral, and it's going to be the content from calling parse log line on the first column. And then that's all, so both of those columns are going to be thrown away. Now for our first actual column, so it's going to be IP, it's a string, and we're going to be using the materialized modifier. And what that does is it stores the data in the database, but it can't be overridden by a, the, in, in an insert query. Let's add some other ones. So we're going to do method. That's going to be a low cardinality string coming from parts the fourth. Index of parts, remembering that ClickHouse does one based indexing on arrays. We'll do URL. Let's do browser and then we'll do status code as well. Now status code is an interesting one because that's a uint 16. And when we create the table, ClickHouse tests these materialized expressions to see if they're actually going to work. And so for status code, it's going to try assigning an empty string to a uint 16 column and that's not going to work. But let's just see what happens. So we'll finish the columns definition. We'll add ourselves a sorting key of URL, and then let's create the table. And you can see it says attempting to read after end of file, cannot parse uint16 from string. And then if you look down the bottom of the error message, it says the default expression and the column type are incompatible. And so we can fix that by using the to uint16 or default function. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert it to a uint16 unless it's missing, in which case it will use the number zero. And there are some other variants of that function available. And then let's add our final column, which is date. And this is a date time. So we have a similar issue here. So this time we're going to use the assume not null function. We're then going to do parse date time best effort or null. And so that null that's there will then be not nulled by the assume not null. We're then going to use a regex to get rid of the forward slashes that were in the date. We'll then append the time on the end. And then that's the date column. And let's create the table. Next, we're going to insert some data into the table. So we'll say insert into logs, and we'll say just the line column, and then we'll do select star from our logs file. Now, this is going to take a little while because it's parsing all the lines with that, that big <laughs> regex expression. So we're going to speed this up a bit, and you can see it finishes processing the 10 million rows in just under a minute. Now, when we're querying this table, at the moment, nothing is going to come back because materialized columns don't show up on a select star by default. So we'd have to individually name the columns if we want them to come back. To work around that, we can use this setting called asterisk underscore include underscore materialized underscore columns, set that to one, and then it will include those columns. And if we do a select star from logs and get back one line, you can see it comes back with the individual columns. We've got IP, we've got method, we've got URL, we've got browser, we've got status code, and then we've got the date as well. And let's do one more query. So we'll say, let's see what the most common status codes are. So we'll count those, we'll group by all and order by the count descending. And you can see it comes back, 200 is the most popular status code, then 304 and then 302. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the materialized modifier, as well as other ones that we didn't cover in this video, like default and alias, check out this video up here, and I'll see you in the next one.